Would it be the brew without having technical difficulties? From day one, every time, there's always something. So well, I have dial-up internet here, so <laughs> I do the, the best dial I can. Up? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't have five minutes where we live. It, they just don't have it out here. Really? Oh, yep. That's got to be tough. So that's got to be tough right, to plan an event like this that's so big. And you know what I mean? Not having – that's got to be tough, man. I like to – if you need anything, let me know. Like if you need me to do anything. <laughs> <you fire>. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, oh, I'm going to uh, you, you know what you could do? We could try to figure out how we could, you could – we can screen sh share and you could use like my – computer to do would that work that probably wouldn't work never mind yeah it's still the same yeah that would work well if there's anything that you could pass on you know if you said hey can you fix this on the website or if you you know whatever whatever it is anything you know you just let me know i'll you know i'm always here Thank to help you. you i always offer to help i know <laughs> <laughs> all right so hi everybody we have some people joining um, and of course, you know, this is an impromptu brew and I'm very happy about those. I love impromptus. They're awesome. Um, so we have Dana Winger with us and, uh, maybe everybody's saying hi. We have Chris Borman, Kenny Biddle, Troy Haney, Megan, she's here. Hi everyone. There's a lot of people. Hi, so thank you everybody for joining us. Huh? What'd you say? say? I know a lot of these people. Yeah, so this is awesome. Can so you hear me? good. Yeah, we can. I can hear you. Um, so I'm just gonna let you do your thing. You, uh, oh well, okay. So let's start with Phenom. Let's start with the first Phenom and how you kind of, you know, just tell the story really quick. You know what you want, like uh, how you decided to start phenomenology, like where it all came from. Many, many years ago, I went to Unicon that was run by Ryan Buell, and that was up in um, Pennsylvania at um, Penn State, and I liked it. It was very much like a classroom style, and you would do ghost hunts at night, and it was a lot of fun, and that's where I met a lot of people. I actually met Dave Schrader there, um, and then Dave started doing Darkness Radio, and he was doing Darkness Radio trips, so I would go on the trips with Dave um, all over the country. They were, they were events, they were awesome, and I liked his style, too. And one day I said to him, you know, Dave, you need to do Gettysburg. And, he, and I kept giving him pamphlets from different hotels and ghost stuff. And he just looked at me and said, do it yourself. So I said, okay. <laughs> so, so I did it myself. Well, not really myself. He really held my hand the whole way through trying to plan, and, and he helped me get people that didn't know me as well as they knew him. And um, it kind of just went from there. Really, but it was just I kind of combined like Brian with <laughs> Ryan did the classroom style stuff, but I also wanted to have vendors in there. Um, neither Dave or Ryan really had vendors. I kind of thought it was important to be able to for people to be able to buy stuff. Right, such a cat. <laughs> yeah, man. She wants it. She so she's my talker. I'm sorry. <laughs> she talks to me. I have one, of and them. this is this is her new toy. Okay. <laughs> this is from a four foot Walmart, the, the Christmas trees. You know how they protect the pointy, pointy part when they come out of the box? This is what this is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She want, she plays fetch with this. She has had this since Christmas. <laughs> and she brings it to oh, me gosh. and sits in front of me and meows until I pick it up and I throw it. And she goes and gets it and brings it back. <laughs> Stay here. All right. Ready? Go get it. Oh, it didn't go very far. Sorry. All right. So go ahead. I apologize. <laughs> no, no apology necessary. Yeah. So that's kind of how we started. And, you know, when I was going to Dave's trips, I got to meet like Chris Fleming and Chip Coffee and John Zappas and Jason and Grant and all these people. And, um, you know, it really became kind of a close friendship with everybody. So when we threw Phenom in there and started doing it, it, I just felt like the relationships grew even more. And I felt it was right. important to bring these people to people closer to us, you know, especially like Gettysburg and stuff like that. Because there didn't seem to be a whole huge network back then of, of people working together, the paranormal. Right. 
No, I think that. I, so mean, I, I just really want to get everybody together. And that's what it feels like. It, like Phenom has a different feel. Don't get me wrong. There are some awesome paranormal events, you know what I mean, out there, you know? Um, but I feel like Phenom is a little, it feels a little bit more like fat, like we're a family when we're all together there. I don't know why. You know what? My opinion is probably biased because it's in Gettysburg. You know what I mean? So I'm already in Gettysburg and I'm like, <laughs> I feel like I'm in ecstasy already. Like when I'm in Gettysburg, I'm like, oh, yes. So I love everybody, everything, you know, <laughs> just like, but uh, I don't know. I, I, Phenom was my very first like paranormal event and I went by myself. And, uh, you know, I was there awesome. by myself. I went by myself for like four days. I went the whole time. I got the VIP and everything like that. And I, I didn't know anyone. I didn't know anybody. And uh, I literally, I left there. I still have friends from there. Paravisions yep. and, you know, all kinds, you know what I mean? Like I left there with friends and 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 everybody was like so cool. I was there, but, you know, um, so, yep. so it's awesome. Like you, It's just like, it feels so fun to be around. I can't wait to be around everybody again. Cause I miss everybody. <laughs> I know I, I can't either. I hope it's not going to feel too weird this year. I, I'm, you know, I'm concerned that's going to feel a little weird. Listen, um, I don't know what restrictions are going to be in place. Yeah. Huh? That's, that's true. I was going to say, are you crazy? <laughs> I'm like, all of us get together and we just party. <laughs> Nobody's going to give a shit. We do. So that's true. You know, we, that's very true. Yeah, we have fun. So I think that's going to be, and think about it. We haven't, most of us haven't seen each other in so long. And then, um, right. and then, you know, we've been bottled up a little bit. So everybody's, I, I'm telling you, it's right. going to be, I think it's going to be good. I like the energy I'm feeling from it is it's going to be good. I think so too. I really yeah. think it will be. So as I was saying, like you, like for me, Phenom is probably one of the best and it was my first one and you know, it popped, you know, I had, that, after that, I was like, okay, maybe I can get into the paranormal stuff, you know? Um, right. Uh, so, who was, do you remember, like, who was your, you know, your first big uh, guest where you were like, yes, this is awesome? Um. Oh, my gosh, who did we have there? I'm trying to think of who we had there the first year. Um, you know, it, it's hard to say because... For me, a big guest is somebody who I felt did a lot in the paranormal, maybe mo more so than on TV, like John. Let's take John Zaffis. Like everybody, he didn't have a TV show at the time, but most everybody knew who he was. Right. You know, so of course it was thrilling for me to get John. Um, I know that one year we had Josh Gates, which kind of everybody oh, went crazy awesome. over. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. I have a picture. Everybody oh, loved Josh Gates. Yeah. Because uh, that was when I, I met him and Britt Griffith. He was there that year yes. too. Yeah. Yep. So right, it's just kind of weird for me because it, it's not a matter of how big they are like on TV or if they're a big star. It's more like who they are. And I think that right. has a lot to do with, with why it turns out to be a good event. It's not because you're a big star on TV. It's because like, I think you're a decent person or I like you. So, you know, my opinion is the only one that matters. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's just like if, if i think you're a decent person if i think you're an a-hole and you're but you're huge on tv i'm not gonna have you right you know and i have learned some lessons along the way you know yeah. I, I have learned that people aren't as nice as they seem sometimes and and those people no longer come to the event so we yeah. just that's what we do we try to make it a a family feel you know, with people who want to be around their fans, there are people who don't want to be around their fans. There are people right. who think that they're better than everybody else. I can tell you, for the most part, when I have people at Phenom, I try to have people that don't act like they're better or they're the best. Right. Like, I might think they're the best, but they usually don't. They're usually pretty humble. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, most, yes. Um, I have come across some that, you know, are not so, you know, and it kind of like throws you off a little bit because you feel very comfortable going up to, you know, I, I'll take it for where, when I was my first woman, I was there by myself. And, you know, it's a little intimidating not knowing anybody and then walking up to people that you kind of think are cool because they're like on TV, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so, you know, so it's a little, so it felt very easy to go up to do a lot of people, you know? Um, right. 
Yeah. So I can tell that you are careful with your selection of people. You can tell. And it shows. It really shows. Uh, you have to be because the last thing you want to do is have an event where people feel put off or like the guests didn't um, didn't enjoy being around them you know and and that has happened i'm not saying that every guest we have had been that way but you can tell that the people that keep coming back have been overly gracious to the guests they know who likes them i mean i am so excited this year to have shane <laughs> from the holder files he ex is so excited about his fans you know like he just can't get over it <laughs> so so i'm so yeah. excited to have him this year he he's like our new humble guy who is a huge hit on tv right now and I'm just, I'm excited to meet him. I'm excited for everybody else to meet him. He just seems so down to earth. And, you know, of course, I, I love Dave. Oh, yeah, I'm letting Kenny show up. <laughs> <laughs> we know Kenny knows everything. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like Dave, I love Dave. He's so much fun to be around. And we have Jason coming this year, which I haven't seen Jason for like 13 years, uh, him and his wife. So it's awesome to have them coming, you know, and it will truly be. Oh, and John's coming, too. John Covey. See you, John. Um, you know, it's just such a friendly environment. And I've seen people with different opinions. Like, you know, I can have a psychic talking to a skeptic and they're having a good conversation and they're getting along and they're not calling names or making fun of each other, you know, and it's kind of pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, I've had Chris Lutz Quarantino from the Amityville house. You, know, you sit there in a room and you have someone who's been abducted by aliens like Travis Walton. You have Chris Lutz, who lived in the most haunted house ever. You also have paranormal have investigators, you know, like Dave Schroeder, who's done his radio show forever before he had the, um, the Holes or Falls. And it's just, it's an amazing mix of people. Bill will be there. We will still see you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Chris will be helping us. You know, uh, so it's just, it's an amazing group of people. and And that's, that's what the best part is about it. You know, it's a lot of hard work. Um, I'm exhausted by the end. I probably won't be able to walk by the end, <laughs> especially if we're back in the Eisenhower, because I can tell you, I've run the halls of the Eisenhower up and down a million times every time we have an event there. Yeah. Now, so, are you, you know, so before you guys were able to use that Eisenhower farmhouse, are they letting you use that? I don't think we can because I think it's so run down that I'm pretty sure you can't go in the building. I'm going to ask the lady running it. Yeah. Huh? I said, I feel like when we were there for like a couple, like, you know, back, they were like work, they were fixing it up, weren't they? When we were going in there, I feel like there was like, kind of like, no? I, I don't know, honestly, no. because the last time we were in it, it looked bad. And then, um, I don't know if they're working on it or not. I can ask the lady. But uh, for some reason, I think it's it's too run down. Like, it's dangerous to be in there. Not that we haven't There's, been in any dangerous places. <laughs> yeah. Right. The thing, the, the awesome thing is, is that, you know, yeah, you, you like doing, the ghost hunts have got to add an extra stress. You know, I mean, they're fun for the people attending and everything. But I'm sure when you're trying to plan, I mean, that in itself is like, an event on, by itself. So technically you're like planning two events. Yeah, it, it's hard. It definitely is hard. The first year that we had it, we had like the Jenny Wade, the orphanage and the Farnsworth. We were investigating those three places. And I can tell you, I walked from those three places all night during the ghost hunts to check on everybody. I just went back and forth and checked on each area all night long. So that, <laughs> that was a job. Yeah. I kind of let that go a little bit cause it's too much. Um, but, yeah. you know, but, but, we have, you know, I, I have a good staff at NEPI and they're, you know, they can handle a ghost hunt. And now that we've done it so many times, I know for sure that they can handle a ghost hunt and do what needs to be done. Um, so I don't have to worry about that too much. I just have to find a location and kind of, um, you know, if you, get it organized. Even if, even if you don't find a place, everybody's in Gettysburg. Like there's not right. anywhere you can't go and go investigate. Right. You can go in the park. You can go around town. I mean, the Eisenhower's supposedly, you know, I mean, everything around there is haunted. Everything, you know, and I say well, haunted. Well, I can tell you every, every time we're there at Phnom, people have experiences at the hotel. 
So right. it's not like it's not a haunted place. I will get a location to investigate. It's just kind of hard to fit it in because I know like Thursday we're doing the meet and greet. Saturday night we're doing the party. So really the only night to do ghost hunts is on Friday. So I'll have to um, try to figure out how to fit that in there because, you know, I don't want to, I really don't want to schedule a ghost hunt while parties going on. Yeah. No. So that, gonna wanna that's know. leaving me. Yeah. Right. Right. So, uh, you know, I've got all these things to figure out. Okay. If we do something on Saturday, it's got to be smaller than what we're doing on Friday because most people have been to the party. And <laughs> so it's yeah, just, I it's, it's a I lot going, going into it. Yeah. I mean, it is. And, and, you know, how do you squeeze? Um, I want to go along on the ghost hunts. Kenny wants to go along on the ghost hunts. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, like you don't ha really have to organize any ghost hunts. People could just go anywhere they want to in the town of Gettysburg and have you know do their own thing. You know what I mean? You, nobody's they can, they absolutely yeah. can. Day, night, whatever. You know, um, right? So I'm looking forward to it. You know, I'm going to be. Me too. Um. So oh, we were talking about something, and then I thought about something, and I forget. Uh. <laughs> It's been one of those days. They said, see my hair here? I woke up with my hair this big. Like, this big. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I tried to wet it down before I came on. I'm like, it's a mess. <laughs> so I haven't washed. See, I don't wash my hair. I wash my hair, like, probably two, three times a week. So right now, it needs a wash. But, um, yes. you know. So this year, it's June 3rd through the 5th, 6th. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, technically it's to the, the the last night of stuff is the fifth, but if you you're staying at the hotel, you want to stay till the sixth because our party is on the fifth. Yeah. And then what's the party about? The party, even though it's a year late, <laughs> it's gonna be the roaring twenties. And of course we always have to put the twist of like a haunted or a zombie or dead roaring roaring twenties. Um, you know, so we come in costume, most of us like to, you know, be scary looking. We, we have fun being scary looking. And I don't want to be um, scary. But kind of like, <laughs> you don't? <laughs> no. <laughs> I want to, I'm, I'm wondering Ooh, if I should, I keep asking everybody, I'm like, you know, the girl, like the peaches. I'm like, are you guys dressing up? Are you guys dressing up? You know? I don't want to be the only I one. I think they like up. to dress up. Mm -hmm. I think most of them like to dress up and you know, like if you don't want to be scary, it's roar roaring twenties um, because it was supposed to be in 2020. So we're kind of going for that theme with like the golds and the blacks and the flapper dresses and the gangster stuff. So it should be fun. Yeah, it is fun. I mean, that's the other thing too. Some of the party, like those parties you've had, you know, we had, what was that theme one year? I think it was like zombies or something. Was it? Yeah. The zombie prom. The zombie prom. That's right. Yeah, that was cool. Um, that was fun. That was really fun, actually. Um, but even then, I didn't get... Uh, uh, oh, people are talking about dressing up and everything. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... But even then, I didn't get anything uh, painted on me. You know, I'm looking forward to meeting, and this is going to sound really cheesy. I'm, like, nerding out, but... Uh, Jason Hawes. <laughs> yeah. Jason's a lot of fun. He's so down to earth. Yeah. So I've met, I've met all of them except him. And so I'm really, I'm looking forward to meeting him. Cause I, you know, honestly, when I started getting into this, I don't know when ghost hunters started, but they were who I, I watched like from, you know, the first okay. season on. So I kind of look up to them a little bit. Like I kind of, you know, they're cool, you know, like, but, you know, I, I do respect their opinion about things and the way they investigate and whatever, you know. So um, I have J one of Jason's books that are her, him and Grant's books. But, you know, so I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting him for sure. I haven't met him yet. So he'll make you feel comfortable and welcome. He, he really does. I, I wouldn't ask anybody there who didn't make people feel that way. Right. Oh, absolutely. Everybody that's been there. I mean, I even... I was talking about Travis Walton last night when I met him, you know, and it was at uh, Phenom and even him. I mean, I mean, we all know, you know, he's, you know, has rightfully so some, some stuff that's lingering, you know, uh, from his experiences, you know, but uh, he was still, 
you know, it, he didn't make me feel nervous or anything. You know what I mean? Like, it yeah. was cool. You know, and uh, you had brought up, there was somebody else you brought up. Um, Chris Lutz. Chris Quarantino. Yes. yes. I talked mm -hmm. to that man for an, literally stood in that vending room and we talked for an hour and a half. Yeah. And it was the yep. most intense conversation that I've had. Like, uh, like, I couldn't believe how intense it was. It was almost like nobody else was in the room and we were just talking. It was so, you know, it was, it was a good conversation. Um, but yeah, that was, he was another interesting person. So I met both of those. I think they were at the same one, weren't they? They're what? I'm sorry. Were they at You're the same? You're breaking up a little bit. Oh, sorry. Were they at the yeah. same phenom? Yes. Yeah. Yes, they were. Yeah. So, yeah. and then, you know, so you have all this stuff going on and people vending. I mean, it's just, it's such a good time, you know? Oh, I know who you had there one time. The guy that played Michael Myers. Um, Tony Moran. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I remember walking down the hallway. You know, you just feel somebody walking behind you. Oh, God. I turn around, and that dude is walking by. I was like, yo. I was like, this ain't <laughs> like You got to go past me. I was like, you can't be walking by. I was like, I know how this goes in the movies. I was like, go. I started laughing. So he was cool, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. He was super nice. Yeah. Um, I've had so many good, I, and that's the thing. Like I've had so many good memories and fun experiences from Phenom, you know? And like I said, I went by myself one year. That's how comfortable and fun it is. Like I just went by myself yeah. and everybody was cool. I hung out, we partied, you know? So we've had a ton of couples meet at Phenom. I know couples that met at Phenom and are still together. So that's kind of a cool thing. It makes oh, me feel good. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yep, awesome. At least three that I'm aware of. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so it's, it's cool. but everybody's just, I mean, it's a good time. You know what I mean? Besides that, you know, you, you get the lectures. Are you having lectures? Yes, we are having lectures this year. Um, Friday and Saturday we'll have lectures. I might do a little something on Thursday night. I know that we all like to do karaoke usually on Thursday nights. Um, so I might do maybe a little panel before we get into drinking and karaoke and all that, you know, just to kind of loosen everybody up so everybody can hear what some of these celebs have to say before they start talking to them, you know? So it's yeah. kind of thinking about doing that. There's, it's so funny because I had everything planned out like to the minute and then everything changed. <laughs> and I'm like, it oh, always, I don't know what to do. I mean, really? I mean, has it, has everything, has anything ever just gone real smooth? Mostly, honest to God, mostly is going real smooth. Believe it or not, um, our biggest thing seems to be like audio equipment never works. Um, the projectors never work. <laughs> you know that I can live with, um, but everything else really has been pretty smooth, and I haven't had any huge issues. Kenny wants to know. Yes, I would like to have a panel discussion. And I know that there are people that want to hear you speak, Kenny. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So I've just got to figure it out. Yeah. Like the so, one year I had the Haunted Survivors. Do you remember the year we had the Haunted Survivor panel, which it was basically people who had um, dealt with kind of serious hauntings and we had them all up there talking. It was Andrea and Roger Perrin. We had um, the people from the Sally House, Deb and Tony, Pickman. Uh, I can't remember. Maybe Carmen was up there. Carmen Reed. Mm -hmm. I think that was it. But they were up there talking about their experiences and like stuff weird was happening on the stage. <laughs> they were talking like a plant fell over. Oh, they, yeah, you know, they yeah. had those fake potted plants. And it was it was kind of weird. Well, but I, I, I mean, know we did that one year. And... Yeah. No, the, and that's and that's I remember. That. But you think about where you're at. And all of the people that are there, everybody, you know, people that have, you know, that are in touch with something, you know, you know, and you're just all that energy and, you know, everybody just this year, I think is going to be, I think you, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. I think this year is going to be really fun. You know I what I mean? I think it's going to be really fun. Yeah, I definitely think so. Because yeah. people, we are all missing each other. We're all missing getting together. 
you know, yeah. like I said, some things might be a little different. I don't know what the restrictions are going to be. Um, you know, we have to do what we have to do, but like I'm having it. I don't care if we're going to be there one way or another. Yeah, listen. But if I have to wear a full body, like self-containment suit to be there, I will. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, just to get in the door, who know, you know, they don't got, we could have like room parties. <laughs> That's right. Everybody's, everybody's, got, everybody's got blocked rooms. So, you know, um, we could probably yeah. do floor parties. Like the whole third floor can have a party. <laughs> yeah, right. That would be so fun. Oh, are all the rooms connected? What do you mean? Now, I'm saying, okay, let's say everybody did. Let's say everybody had a room on the third floor. Right. Do all, do all the rooms in there, do they all have the conjoining doors or there's only certain rooms? I think they probably all do. Um, but it's only like two rooms connect to each other. Right. I'm pretty sure they uh, all do. All the, you know, like not all the rooms connect, but like your room oh, and my room and then so somebody cool. else's room and their room connect. So I Can think there's I, one set of cool connecting doors. Between them. How cool would it be <laughs> if there was, there was two doors in every room and you could just open up all the doors and just go to everybody's room and just hang out. <laughs> yeah. That would be a lot of fun. We kind of do that anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Um, uh, somebody said room parties. What's that? <laughs> Kenny said, <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Kenny yeah. I said, just getting together. Everybody's gonna be so happy to get together. Like, and I guarantee you, cause last year we did it. Um, the batch yeah. got canceled, you know, and we just, everybody just, well, not everybody, but there was a quite a, there was a quite a bit of people that just still went. Right. And everybody hung out and partied all weekend. And we, you know, it was fun, you know. Uh, who's a, oh, Dana's a pro. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I think it's, I, I think it's going to be a positive thing. I mean, everybody's, I mean, I'm not, I'm, this is not political, political. I'm not asking anybody their opinions on this, but I think, you know, the people that are in control of these things, once people start getting more and more vaccinated, I think, they're going to like open it up more and more. You know what I mean? Regardless of what the numbers are, because it's number schmumbers, everybody's coming out and saying they lied about the numbers anyway, you know, but I think once well, people, and, once it, and by June, people, they're, they're saying the mass was going to be, you know, vaccinated. So they're saying by May even. Well, I can tell you this in Maryland, um, pretty much everything is at a hundred percent capacity. Um, you're still required to wear a mask. You're still supposed to social distance, but everything's open to hundred percent capacity. Bars are open up, you know, until two now. So all this stuff is still open here in Maryland. It's, it's open. So then our numbers are going up, but we're not closing back down. We're staying open. So I think you're right. I think as whoever decides what they decide, as more people get vaccinated, no matter what the numbers say, they're going to be opened up. Yeah. yeah. I, I really I think, think it's true. Yeah, I think that people yeah. are feeling more comfortable knowing that people are being vaccinated. You know what I mean? So I think I think that's one positive thing, too, to look at, you know, um, that even though they're not saying it right now, I, I mean, they are kind of saying like as I mean, they're kind of hitting around to it like every morning and this and that. But, you know, so right. I think only by because they're saying um, I was seeing something this morning um, that they um uh those they're saying like the johnson and johnson ones came in or something like that so they're saying by next week whatever phases pennsylvania is in the phase is going to be the next phase up so right. they're saying by the end of april everybody that should be vaccinated will be vaccinated you know what i mean so you're going to be good going forward i think after that well, and I can say, and we're going to be mostly in our hotel. Um, I understand people are probably going to go out, but yeah, I realize mostly in our hotel, it's probably just going to be our group. You know what I mean? It's probably just going to be the non people there because we kind of take over the whole place when we're there. We do. So I always um, think of it that too, like when there's other people walking through the lobby, you know, that are there just like to vacation <laughs> and stuff. I'm like, the fuck are they thinking <laughs> i feel so sorry for them when they're there yeah and i just we're supposed to be doing our party in the pool area yeah 
Oh, because that is not going to work because there's no one that's going to want to listen to us in the pool area till Lord only knows how late. I, so think, I, have me to got, I think me and Megan got a, uh, a pool, a, one of the rooms Did that goes out of the pool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> we know I'll bring my kids to you. I'm going swimming. <laughs> I'm going sw It's going to be June. Yeah, we're going to go swimming. Go swimming because I've never gone swimming in a hotel pool ever. <laughs> I That's haven't. It's funny. It's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I never have. Oh my gosh, this is my really good friend from Florida. Hi, Anthony. Thank you for tuning in. Love you. Miss you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll be swimming. I'm going to be swimming. You better talk to that lady because I think they shut it down like really early, don't they? The pool? The pool? I don't yeah. know. I don't, you you do know that there's also supposed to be like two drowned children in the pool that you can hear at night. That's awesome. I'm definitely going swimming. I, it's all, you know, tell her we're going to be investigating the pool area, but I have to get in the pool in my bathing suit <laughs> in order to feel the vibes <laughs> around me. I'm sure they'll be fine. I, I'm sure um, they're happy to have our business. They, and they said, and I'm going to tell you this, I'm not trying to scare you, but they said the rooms on the mm -hmm. Eisenhower side are not um updated let's put it that way yeah. that i don't care they said you probably high. might not want to stay on the eisenhower side <laughs> i don't know what's i don't care what side we're on because honestly i'm going to be in my room to sleep okay yeah i mean they you know just I mean? She, she she kinda, they told me that for the most part people are going to want to stay in the aspire side because the eisenhower side is a little um um, I want to use the word date it, but I don't know if that's really, <laughs> that's not a strong enough word, <laughs> but they are, it's haunted over there. So, you know, we're paranormal investigators. We don't really always stay in the best accommodations anyway. You know, that's true. I'm telling what you what, I, oh yeah, I've stayed in some, not, yeah, no. Right. So that's like, it's fine. But again, all I'm doing is sleep in there. You know, I'm not going to be, right. we're barely going to be, um, we're barely going to be in our room, you know? Right. So, right. So, I'm yeah, fine so it's with probably that. not a big deal. And yeah. I would honestly, I would rather know that more of us are on the pool side than people that aren't part of our group because I don't really want anybody getting mad at us for making too much noise sitting there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where we're at. Megan's always, she's my roomie, no matter where we go, what we do. And she always makes, she's like the mom of us. Like she makes the plans and, you know, does all that and picks the room. And I'm just like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever you want. I don't care. You know, I'm the easiest <laughs> roommate whatsoever. I'm like, I don't give a shit what you do. Just pick whatever you want. <laughs> she's like, okay. <laughs> so, but uh, we have a lot of fun. I can't wait for it. Honestly, I'm like, so excited. And it's really a lot closer than what you think is not that far away. Uh, I know. I know it, it's, it's coming up quickly and I've got so much to look through and so much to go over and, and numbers to count and all that again. And oh, it's just, it's a lot. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, for people that are watching, they just let them know, like, you know, about like the tickets and what to, what it, you know, just about the whole thing. Okay. So we have VIP tickets, which are $175 for the VIP ticket. You can, um, be at the meet and greet. You do all the lectures, all the um, the vendor room, and the party on Saturday night. That's all included in that. Also, Friday is only for VIP guests. So what I was trying to do, and now I don't mm -hmm. know if things are going to be as crowded, is to make sure that the VIP um, kind of get a little bit of an exclusive um, access to the vendors and to the celebrities without long lines. So that's pretty much what the Friday is for, so that the v VIPs don't have to wait in line. They don't have to, um, you know, bustle through a crowd or anything like that. Saturday, we open it up to the day passes, which are $25, $50. I'm sorry, I think they might be $50 a piece, which will include all your lectures, all your vendors for the whole day. Um, we are only allowing a certain amount into the party that we're having that night. Um, that's the Roaring 20 party. I'm trying to think what we have going on. Oh, Chelsea Damali. She is going to be doing a gallery reading. If you are a VIP, you can get her gallery reading for $10. If you're not oh, a VIP, you can get her it. reading for 50. Um, 
So she she's new to the scene. I know that she's done a couple of shows, a couple of TV shows and stuff. She's trying to get herself out there. She wants people to see how spectacular she is. Um, so she's that's why we're offering it to the VIPs for just ten dollars. Chip Coffee is supposed to be coming. I know with his health issues and stuff, he is firmly sticking to the guidance of his doctor. He's going to be doing a gallery that is um, sixty dollars. If you want to sign up for that. We're still like, he's still on the fence. He has to listen to his doctors because he's older and he has diabetes. So we don't want to put him in any kind of danger or anything. And yes, you, there's Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Michelle's coming to talk too. She's going to um, do a lecture for us there. She, Michelle's website is Thriller Events. She is helping me sell tickets. What's great about her website is that they can offer an insurance for a refund if you cannot attend. I cannot offer a refund. I'm not a company and no, I'm not a big corporation. Um, so she offers insurance for a refund in case something were to happen. I know like Ticketmaster and stuff like that um, also offers that kind of thing. I cannot. So if you go to Thriller Events and look for Phenomenology or Phenom 2020, um, you can get your tickets there. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle. That's awesome. Thank you for helping. Yeah. She That's is helping great. me so much to promote and get everything out there. Awesome. And um, I haven't put chips. Uh-oh. Am I frozen or you're um, frozen? Gallery Am um, I frozen? No, you're good now. Am Go I ahead. Okay. I started over say I had to put chips. That was last thing I heard. I did not put chips gallery on Michelle's website yet because he's still not 100% sure. So I didn't want to go out there and throw him out there. And she has a little um, video trailer, if you all have seen it, of the guests that are coming. These are the people. They, whew, those are the people. <laughs> what word did I say? Those are the people that we have 100% confirmed. Um, that I've been able to talk to after all this COVID stuff. I know a lot of people are still up on the website. Um, a lot of them are supposed to be coming, but I don't want to force anybody if they're uncomfortable. You know, I don't think that's fair to say, oh, well, you have a contract. You have to be there. Oh, you know, we've changed the date twice now and people are not comfortable yet. So once they're comfortable, if they're going to come, I'll let you know. Yeah, you know, who did I just talk to the other day? That, oh, Andrea Parent. We weren't sure about Andrea. Um, but she just confirmed that she's coming. Her dad's not coming because he's older, um, but she's going to come. Awesome. And she's been vaccinated too. So that's cool. <laughs> um, when is Tess's lecture? Is um, she I coming? Haven't put the schedule. I haven't put the schedule together yet. So I, I, I don't know. Um, I have the old schedule on there, which I'll probably try to follow that as close as possible. But I haven't really um, looked at schedule at all. Thank you, Michelle. Um, yeah. Let me see here. Hold on. Uh, Kenny said he's VIP. Duh. Yeah, sure. Um, oh, wait. Sorry. I meant to do this one. Megan's excited. Megan. She is excited. It's because she Thank gets a room with me for four nights. Yes, I think, right? Tess is coming. Mm -hmm. She's coming. Right, hold on. Um, oh, Chris said, we'll update the site as we confirm things. So, yes. um, has Jason Halls confirmed? Yes. Awesome. Yep. <laughs> um. Hi, thank you. Thank you oh. for watching. I hope, hopefully you guys will be uh, checking the Phenom out. Um, so, yeah, so I'm looking, I'm looking so forward. So how many, do you have a lot of tickets left? Like how are, you know, how are the tickets, you know, if everybody could we, please share, share the Phenom and <laughs> buy tickets, come and hang out. We have so much fun. We could um, probably do about another 100 VIP tickets. And as far as day passes for Saturday, I'm going to say they're unlimited. And it's a big area. People can come in and out, you know, um, and walk through it. You know, if it gets to where it's too big and we have to, like, go into the courtyard or whatever, we'll go into the courtyard. <laughs> if there's plenty of room, there's plenty of room over there to spread out and do what we need to do. Yeah. So, oh yeah, that I, I place think is huge. Fun. Yeah, so we can probably do about a hundred more VIP tickets and feel comfortable, and I'm and I'll sell as many day passes as we can. 
Uh, hold on, somebody's asking a question. If you have a VIP ticket, it's nothing. If you do not have a VIP ticket, I think we were doing 25. I have to check to make sure, but I think it's 25. Now, does that include, the, Does that is that just the party? Yes. Okay. So she would, she couldn't just, could she, could she just buy a ticket just to go to the party or does she have to, does that get combined with something? I would prefer that people did not just buy the party. I would prefer right. that because I, I don't want um, the party just to be full. You know what I mean? To have too many yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. 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 I get that. Yeah. So, so, we, would so prefer that we would just like prefer that you have a, a Saturday pass and a VIP and a yeah. party ticket. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I mean, and, and if you're coming, why wouldn't you do that anyway? Right, because you want to see the vendors and all that. Oh, she said, okay, so she said, I'm not sure I get off for Friday, and it would be a day pass plus. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah, well, like, because why, would why wouldn't you do that, you know? Right. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm so excited about this. Um, I'm very excited. Uh, oh, what year was it? I think that was the year that I did meet John's at. This was probably... I'm probably selling stuff all from the same year of my most memorable one, probably. I don't even know. But <laughs> I think it was when they did the Harlem Shuffle. Yes, that was the same year as the zombie prom. That's when Josh Gates was there. Uh, so we had Josh Gates and John, and I think Chris Quarantino was there. We, yeah, because we had the zombies. We did the whole zombie prom thing because we had Michael Kosky and Kevin Galbraith mm -hmm. from The Walking Dead. They were walkers. So we kind of did the whole thing around the zombies that year yeah i have a picture with them like one of them's like holding my head and the other one's like biting me <laughs> <laughs> i was getting attacked by zombies um oh cool there's a whole bunch of people it was the great yeah it was a harm shuffle yeah that was so awesome that was fun that was fun that was funny um, yeah and i think i think and then there's like a lot of people that like are going that are just our friends, you know what I mean? Just not, not like just the vendors and the, you know, this and that. I mean, it, it's, it's such a good time. You really, I mean, you could probably get, yeah. you're going to have like re readers there, you know, uh, tower cards, I guess. Right. You're going to have like healing stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Yep. We'll have that. We'll have people selling paranormal equipment. Um, we'll have protection, um, items there from different faiths. So it's kind of like a hodgepodge of everything you could want paranormal. Yeah. Me and Megan are so tripping on the fact that we've only known each other for a short period of time. Like we both are like, there's no way. How did I know you then? <laughs> it was, <laughs> it feel like we've known each other forever, but we, we, when we think about it, we're like, yeah, we didn't meet until da da da. It's like, what? Well, you know, I know how Megan knows you from doing packets because Matt always said that your name was supposed to be Karen Turper. <laughs> instead of That's Taren right. Turper. That's right. I remember and that. And I'm sure Megan remembers that. <laughs> that is right. We'll even have a freaking skeptic. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Who Jason Halls is a big fan of Kenny, which totally blows me away. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, I might be a little Kenny. jealous, but I'm just <laughs> still. Yeah, here. right. Wait, does Kenny know this? Yes. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I might ban Kenny from the event. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Jealousy does a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's cool. Go Kenny, go Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I didn't, oh, she said, I didn't even think of Matt saying that till now. <laughs> that's all I could think about. He kept saying her name's got to be Karen. You messed it. She was, he was yelling at me for messing it up. <laughs> you got this wrong. I remember, and I remember you said something to me about it at the time, and I was like, yeah, no, you got it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
yeah so it's it's gonna be fun and again i'm sure most of the people there you know if you need help with anything you know people are gonna help no matter what so oh i know everybody's so willing to jump help. in we've streamlined it so much um i remember the days when i would have giant post-it notes all over the walls so that we could make packets but <laughs> you know kind of went to spreadsheets now which aren't as fun they aren't near spreadsheets are not as fun as giant yellow post-it notes on the wall but they work kenny tell him that i love him um he said he talks to him <laughs> he said be jealous <laughs> shut up kenny you ain't coming <laughs> i revoke your pass <laughs> <laughs> Kim, here we go. <laughs> I can't. It's going to be insane. We're going to have so much fun. I can tell you when me and my husband met Jason, all of us were talking and everything. And he really like connected with Chris. And I looked at Chris. I'm like, really? <laughs> I said, I liked him first. And he's right. like, but he liked me better. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Uh, yeah, Chris said, yeah, Chris made me do the spreadsheets. Chris Borman made me do the spreadsheets. You, man, if you have dial up, you don't want to be messing with that shit. You're like <laughs> post-it notes. Give me post-it notes. Why well, I got dial up. I don't want to mess with post-it notes. I mean, I don't want to mess with spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I bet you like half the people that are, you know, like little the, the teenagers and stuff like that, they're like dial up. What? I know, but you know, we moved here uh, six years ago and I had no idea that we didn't have Fios here. And when we moved in, I'm like, all right, let's get the internet. And they're like, what? It's like, where's my internet? But yeah, it was really a total letdown. Hi, Eric. Hey, Eric. Eric's coming and he's going to be talking all things weird and creepy. <laughs> oh, that'll be fun. Eric, Eric is our favorite cryptozoologist. Yes. Hold on. I don't know what I'm doing. Hold on. We'll wait. Okay. All right. There we go. Wait. All right. There we go. Um. So I remember the lecture that changed my life about Ouija boards. Totally changed my oh, life. Oh, Bob Murray. Yes. That was probably one of the best lectures I've ever seen. I went in He's there. It's pretty awesome. Oh my gosh, it was the I, I, it was the best lecture I ever I've ever sat in on. Like he totally changed my mind about the Ouija board in in an hour. <laughs> I was totally sold on his whole concept of it. You know what I mean? It was I just thought it was awesome. And that was the same. I talk about this all the time, but that was the same night that I investigated with Jeff Ballinger and Bob, and uh. And Bob Murph in the Farnsworth house in the basement for 15 minutes. And it was probably the funniest <laughs> 15 minutes of my entire life. <laughs> Go sunning. Uh -huh. like, the two of them are insane together. I love it. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you when you leave Phenom, your face will hurt from laughing so much yes. the whole weekend. Your face will hurt. And, you know, this is the worst part. It's such a letdown when it's over. It, it's like so depressing when Phenom is over and oh, everyone's yeah. gone. It's so it's it's horrible. I mean, it really is. It's like your whole family just left and you don't know when you're yeah. gonna see them again. Yep. And and that and that's the thing. Like that's why I think everybody's just so excited to to have this happen. You know, last mm -hmm. year I was so excited. I was like, okay, it's gonna happen. And then it was like a couple weeks before. It was like, boom. You're like, no. <laughs> like, I know. I know. It was so, so sad. It was so sad. But um Kenny has spooned. Oh my gosh, they're being they're being they're being uh <laughs> <laughs> focus people, focus. It's phenom, it's phenom. <laughs> hey, you know what we don't focus. It's not what we do. <laughs> No, we can't. Which I think is why Phenom is kind of crazy. You know, we have so many things going on um, that we, you know, I know I'm ADHD and I know most of us are. We have so much going on. You can run around from place to place to thing to thing and have fun and just 
be all over the place because that's how I am. I'm all over the place all the time. So it's kind of like a crazy mess, but it works. And I, it's, it is, it's a crazy fun. You know what I mean? Like you're just like, at the end of it, you're just like, wow, that was just, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I, I mean, I think everybody's, everybody's, even if it, even if shit is like still whatever, which I doubt, I think everybody's gonna be like, F it, I'm going. I hope so. You know, and, and like I said, I would never, you know, you work in healthcare, I work in healthcare. I would never put anyone in a situation they're uncomfortable with. And I would never want anyone to feel like they were in any kind of danger. You know what I mean? So that's why we've been super careful. That's why, you know, it got postponed twice. Mm -hmm. But I, I also believe that by June, we're going to be okay. But I, I don't so. know if that's wishful thinking. I don't know if it's, I, I don't know if it's my third eye telling me, shut up, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, I just feel like it's going to be better in June. I just have that feeling. Yeah, I, I absolutely, I, I feel like it's going to be really, really fun. And I'm going to tell you this right now. Even if it doesn't have, if let's God forbid, not going what doesn't happen, something happens, crazy, right? Out of our control. I'm still going. I'm still going too. I'm still going. I'm going. I said, if I have to sit in that hotel by myself, you're not going to sit by yourself because I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, bam, 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 phenomena. <laughs> phenomena. <laughs> we'll have our own little party. That's right. Megan said she'll be there. So there'll be three of us. Well, and Connie, my Nikki, I believe she's in, she's on the West coast. I want to say she's California. She said she's definitely coming no matter what. Oh, that's awesome. So everybody's still going to go no matter what, what are they going to do? We all have rooms. Nothing. What are they going right. to do? We all have rooms. There's not much they can do. They can try to break us up, but you know. Yeah. But they're, I mean, what are they going to do? Nothing. Right. What can they um, do? Shut down the vendor room if something happens. So <laughs> Yeah. Um, one thing one thing I was hoping, and I don't know if you can even say it on here or not, but it's whatever. You don't have to say anything. But I'm really, really hoping that somebody shows up with moonshine. Okay, now let me tell you, I need to talk to Chris Denman. I am so afraid to approach him right now because I know June is wedding season and I know he makes a ton of money. I know he makes more at a wedding than I can afford to pay him. So <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I'm so afraid he's going to tell me no. That but I'm you know what, though? Money. I think a whole bunch of people, I don't know where this the post was at or whose page it was on, but might have even been his, but everybody was like, are you you said, or ever, all these people are like, I want some, I want some. Like there was like a lot of people saying they wanted some. Well, then maybe that'll encourage him. I just, I hate to ask him because like, no, I can't offer him what a wedding does, you know? So it kind of makes me feel bad. Yeah. Everybody's up. <laughs> peach shine. Yes. That peach was so good. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, everybody, uh, like I wrote on there, I said, this is my order. Peach, 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 <laughs> apple. peach, 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 peach. <laughs> um, Didn't he have pineapple one year? I think I like the pineapple. Mm, it, it's all good. It's all good. Um, so can people, uh, oh, here's the question uh, that probably people want to know. Can you um, buy tickets at the door? Not VIP passes. You can buy the day passes at the door. And I'm going to say not party passes because we, we need to count for the party because we're going to have like hors d'oeuvres and stuff. So we need to know how many people. So they definitely have to be bought, I would say, at least 30 days ahead of time. Um, the VIP and if you were doing a day pass and a party um, ticket, I would do at least 30 days ahead of time. Okay. Where's the party going to be at in, that, in the where the bar is and everything? They're saying we should do it in the pool area. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is cool. But then I'm like, how early do we have to end the party if we do it yeah, in the no. pool area? Do we... Ooh, so... but this, could be, this could be our reasoning for being able to be in the pool later than the cutoff time. True. So I don't know what they're going to. I'm going to have to talk to the lady because let's say if we, if we 
can do the pool area from 8 to midnight, then we'll have to scooch out because of people sleeping and stuff like that. Right. So, However, in that they want you to do it in there, they don't want you to do it where the bar area is? No. Because we had the karaoke thing in there, then the DJ was in that other room. Like, I know. I don't know. I, I'm going to have to talk. This lady, she's never worked with us before. Music. Yeah, th this lady um, never worked with us before. So I I'm going to have to go actually to the Eisenhower and kind of walk through and tell her that, you know, we need to be loud and crazy. She's oh, she's never, to... she's never been there for that. No, it's all new management because I was not going to go back with the old management. <laughs> so it's all new management now. They don't know us, which is good and bad. <laughs> yeah, well. Oh yeah, we always do the after party for sure. Um, you know, for the zombie prom, we left the walls covered in like blood and stuff. Did did you know that? <laughs> oh my gosh! It looked like somebody was murdered in the hallway because there was, I guess, makeup <laughs> and stuff on the walls yeah. and people leaning against the walls being drunk. It was horrible. Yeah, that was so fun though. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> we destroyed the hotel that night. I mean, I hate to say it, but we destroyed it. Oh, Lord. So, you know, despite the, whatever happened, you know, I'm just, I'm happy it's in Gettysburg. And that's only because of my love. It's my love for Gettysburg, kind of, you know what I mean? But, but also that was my first thing ever in Gettys like that in Gettysburg. You know, it just kind of like, just feels like that's where it's supposed to be. You know, and you know, honestly, with the hotel, like I feel really at home at the hotel. The first management with us was great. They switched over to new management. They sucked. So hopefully this new new management will be better. But I love the hotel. I love the way it's laid out. You know, it's perfect for us. It's absolutely yeah. perfect for us. It isn't so big. It there's is so it's many huge. different. Yeah, it, there's so many different, you know, areas for everybody to be in. You know what I mean? So. Yep. You know, it's it's it is perfect for our group. And did and you more. ever did you ever see their sports arena? No, it's huge. I to me, my goal was always to get the event into the sports arena. It's huge. I mean, it, it's it's unbelievable, and they don't use it for anything. Really? Yep. Oh, we have to venture there. I want to see it. Okay, I'll, I'll show you where it is. Yeah, I totally want to see it. Uh, oh, Kim. All right. <laughs> Eric's dead. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's that's crazy. I've, I learned, I had a, a Bigfoot guy on and, and I learned that mostly it's like, you know, by yourself when you, you guys go out there, it's crazy. You know, um, Chris would go with you, Eric, just call him. He would definitely go with you. Yeah. So, um, I shared the links on the bruise page and everything like that. And, uh, you know, so people can go. I shared um, Michelle's where you can go to get the uh, tickets and everything like that. I don't know um, if there's any other questions that anybody has, you know, that's, you know, um, you know, I guess you, they could reach out to the Phenom. Does the Phenom have like a contact? We, us have, a type of thing? we have a group page. We have an event page. I, I do see a lot of emails through there. If you go to my website, you can email me through there. Um, I rarely talk on the phone, so you can text me. <laughs> I won't call you, but you can text me. Terrible. Yeah. Pardon. Well, that's easy. That's the easiest thing. Uh, what's <laughs> Kenny has a question. Yes. Oh, wait, hold on. We've had a few streakers, so there really is no policy. You can do what you want. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> We've had streakers, so don't don't act like you're first. I would love Wait, for June to come faster. I would love for June to come faster. Make it come faster, but then make it slow down. 
for like we'll stop week. for those couple days. <laughs> <laughs> it would be like that weekend for 45 days. <laughs> oh, yeah, so that would be awesome. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? What if we like rented an oh, what if we rented an island one year? <laughs> the island that of dolls. Epic. <laughs> Phenomenal. Where's Phenomenal this year? Costa Rica, man. An island. <laughs> <laughs> you go now, the tick the, the airline tickets aren't that expensive. That's right. Right? Oh, that's a good, that's good, Chris. That's like a good little punchline for Phenom. <laughs> that might scare people though. <laughs> All right, my love. Um, thank you for coming on. And I hope. Thank you so I hope, much. I don't know what this is, but if there's an island, we went on it. Um, <laughs> but uh, thanks for coming on. And I hope, you know, this helps out, you know, to get a little bit more out there and everybody share it. Please share it, share, 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 share. Share Phenom, buy your tickets, yes, give you. it to buy. I mean, it's such a fun time. Everybody there is so cool. And, uh, it's going to be a great weekend. I can't wait. It will be. I know it's going to be a great weekend. Yeah, yeah. And I love you. If you need anything, you make sure. I mean, everybody on here is more than welcome to. Oh, that's a good idea. What? Oh, I would love to. Oh, that would be great. But everybody would have, you know, every, it would be like, you know, like the every man for himself on that one. <laughs> like, oh yeah you know I mean but that would be awesome there are so many places that I've thought about having it but apparently it's only going to work in Gettysburg for me because I've tried to have it in other places and it just don't work because that's <laughs> where it's supposed to be I'm starting to feel that yeah that's my Key West <laughs> so I get excited <laughs> I, don't, I don't even care um, yeah awesome all right. I love you. And uh, if you do you want to come on again, when it gets closer, we'll, we'll find a special night for you again and we'll do it again. So, I appreciate um, that. you know, you're always welcome whenever you want on the brew. So uh, thank you. All right. And thank you for all your hard work uh, for putting this together and, you know, making sure that it happens for all of us. We appreciate it. Uh, so I'm sure any of us are more than welcome to uh, more than willing to help you, you know, for putting this I on. I know you guys are great. Your guys are definitely great. Yeah. All right. I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Take care. Love you guys. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>